Support us by subscribing, ring the notification bell, press all, and thumbs up. Thank you. These clips show an unprecedented look at the primary and secondary border barriers in San Diego. Back at the end of August, a $147 million border wall replacement project for the new border barrier was completed. It is a 14-mile stretch of border fencing between the Pacific Ocean and Otai Mountain, with an 18-foot-tall steel barrier. These steel beams replaced much shorter Vietnam-era metal panels, that were originally installed in the mid-1990s, to stop people from driving across the border. San Diego Sector Acting Deputy Chief Patrol Agent Kathleen Scudder has said, the steel panels have accomplished that goal, but illegal border crossings have evolved, modernized and adapted. Coupled with other border infrastructure in the area, including stadium lighting, motion sensors, cameras and, of course, border patrol agents, the new border fence should increase agent safety, and decrease human and drug smuggling, Scudder said. One part of that system doesn't work alone, she said. A wall or a fence isn't going to keep people out, necessarily. We don't build the walls to be a complete deterrent. They are one tool as part of the system. Those individual parts of the system performing together give Border Patrol agents the ability to work smarter with finite resources to secure the southern border. Border Patrol agents have said the taller steel beams are an upgrade from the Vietnam-era steel panels in two major ways. First. The Border Patrol agents can see through spaces, in between the steel beams so the agents won't be caught off guard, by people running up to the fence or even throwing rocks over the structure. Second, the taller obstacles take longer to climb, which gives agents more time to respond. If we didn't have a wall like this, and you could just jump over within seconds, said Agent Vincent Pirro. How fast can you be in a car? You'll be in a car into the United States in a matter of minutes. The Trump administration has had a difficult time securing the billions, needed for this border project. But at least something has been done. In San Diego, most of the plan, to replace the secondary border fence has been started, a steel mesh fence, about 20 feet north of the primary fence, with 30-foot tall steel beams, similar to the ones in the primary fence. That secondary fence project is currently underway and should be completed by January 2020. Other than those replacement projects, there are no plans to install new fencing in San Diego, which is already one of the most heavily, fortified sections of the entire southwestern border. Scudder the CBP deputy noted that in San Diego, there has been a strong correlation between more border infrastructure and, less human and drug smuggling. Statistics show that both forms of smuggling, have decreased significantly in San Diego since 2001. That year, there were 110,000 apprehensions along the border and agents seized more than 26,000 pounds of marijuana. In fiscal year 2019, apprehensions were at 51,800 and, agents only found 2,000 pounds of marijuana. The amount of meth and heroin, however, has increased significantly during that same time period. Agents seized 18 pounds of meth in 2001 and almost 3,000 pounds in 2019. With heroin, Agent seized 116 pounds in 2001, and 3,500 in 2019. CBP continues to implement President Trump's Executive Order 13,767, also known as Border Security and Immigration Enforcement Improvements, and continues to take steps to expeditiously plan, design, and construct a physical wall along the southern border, using appropriate materials and technology, to most effectively achieve operational control of the southern border. According to CNN and other news outlets, the Trump administration has sent letters to dozens of residences in California, New Mexico, and Texas, notifying owners that the government is going to survey their land, for future border barriers, according to two U.S. defense officials. The right of entry letter grants the government permission to enter specified private lands, to conduct environmental assessments, property surveys, appraisals, geotechnical, and other exploratory work to facilitate future land acquisition and construction of a border barrier on those lands, U.S. Army spokesperson Cheryl Rivas told CNN in an email. Should the landowner decide not to sign the right of entry letter, the Army may refer the matter to the U.S. Department of Justice, to initiate a condemnation for court-ordered temporary access to the property, she added. The Trump administration is trying to ramp up construction of border barriers in areas that are largely privately owned, requiring the federal government to seek permission, before surveying the land. Last week, Acting Customs and Border Protection Commissioner Mark Morgan said, he recognized the obstacles facing plans to erect additional barriers, citing old records, lawsuits and land that might have multiple landowners. 
Morgan was quoted as saying, it's a challenge, but again, I still think we're on track to get the land we need for 450 miles, he told reporters. But I will say is there are lawsuits out there. So again, we've seen a lot of the judicial activism out there, and land acquisition is not going to be immune from that as well. Officials said the projects on the land being assessed, would use Pentagon money that the Trump administration, redirected from various military construction projects, known as 2,808 funds. Those Now friends, in this clip we can see better constructed cement block barriers being constructed and placed. These cement block barriers were prototypes that were being tested, in 2017. But because of money constraints, these cement barriers were abandoned. I think an ideal barrier would have looked more like these concrete blocks. Anyways, it is what it is, and once the entire old barriers have been replaced it will be time to cover the over 1,500 miles remaining. Anyways, thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and press all. And remember, peace through strength.